Hello everyone, and for the first time in a little while, welcome back to some Battletech Alpha Strike. It has been a while, so bear with us for any little errors, but hopefully you've been looking forward to its return on the channel. And if you are a channel member, you will be seeing this early. It's one of the little perks to help support the channel that you get to see certain series early, by about a week in most cases, and this is one of those. And this is going to be a special one because it's actually a three-way battle between lances of three different factions in a kind of custom scenario loosely based on one of the ones from the quick start rulebook for Alpha Strike but we'll cover that once we look at the lands for each of the three sides. So let's start with my mercenary band the Flix Marauders group although in general each lance is approximately before adding on pilot skill 160 points some of them are one or two points below that some of them are one or two points above that but 160 was the rough aim with a fair mix of sizes three and four mechs in most instances with a couple of twos just if the four is you know very very powerful to try and balance it out trying something new so it may not work out that way but who knows so here is the lance for flix marauders that i'm bringing we have a stalker 5m we have a marauder 5d we have a zeus 9s and we have a rifleman 5d just because i really like the rifleman it's probably my favorite mech so that's what i'm bringing each Squad is going to average pilot skill 4, except one who's going to be the commanding officer who has pilot skill 3. And I've chosen the stalker to be my uh, commanding officer of the lance. So he's skill 3, rest of them skill 4. And first time using the stalker as well, so we'll see how it goes. Next we have the Northwind Highlanders with a lance made up of four of the mechs from one side of the Alpha Strike starter box. Uh, the other side is a clan side. But either way, we have the Atlas S4, we have the Warhammer 8R, we have the TR5 Wraith, which is this one here. And then finally, we have the BJ5 Blackjack right here. And it is the, what was it? The Atlas is pilot skill 3, and the other three are pilot skill 4. And as I say, roughly 160 points before you add on the pilot skill, but the pilot skills are the same across the board, so more or less it works out the same ratio. And here is the third lance today, Draconis Combine slash House, House Korea. Although I guess just with the way it's kind of worked out, it's more like Team Red, Team Green, Team Blue, which might be easier to keep track of for anyone who isn't familiar with the actual names from um, the world. But either way, we have a Longbow 7V at the back here. We have an Orion ON1K right here. We have a Zeus 9S, so Snap, same kind as what I brought. And then we have a Trebuchet 7M down here which is a lighter mech it's a size 2 but uh, there's two size 4s here and the size of the mechs are going to be relevant to the custom scenario we're playing today as well so I'll cover that in a moment so here's a look at the battlefield and it's all going to be about the central command building in the middle of the battlefield that's what we're going to use kind of like as the main objective and the goal assuming that two sides aren't fully wiped out leaving just one side standing that'll be one victory condition the other victory condition is at the end of each round Mechs in contact with this building score victory points equal to their size. That should, in theory, create a potential balance of, well, do you send your heaviest mech in to get the points, or do you just make them walk so that they can actually fire? Because sprinting, they might get their turn to. Like, the Atlas is super slow, longbows aren't exactly fast, you know, that kind of thing. So there, might, there should be a trade-off between, do you want to shoot a lot, or do you want to sprint and just try and start scoring victory points as soon as possible? Um, multiple sides can score each turn and we'll just see how that kind of works out it might work out terribly we don't know until we try it so that's what we're going to do one side will be deployed to the left of your screen kind of coming in from this table edge one from the right table edge and just so it's easier to film the top table edge for the third side in terms of working out initiative there'll be an initial roll the winner goes last the next two roll then the loser goes first because in Battletech you want to go last. The same will apply for shooting order once we get into that as well. So, we'll go get everything set up and be back after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So we're back with all sides set up and we're going to do a little bit of shaky cam here to show you and we'll have to zoom into the top of the table to see where the Northwind Highlanders, aka Team Green, are set up. You can just about see the Blackjack behind that building there. He has jump, jump capability, so he's going to be aiming to get onto that building almost certainly. Over on this flank, my Marauders are here with the Rifleman Stalker, Marauder, and then the Zeus at the bottom down here. Uh, I think only the Marauder has jump capability for the lands I've brought. 
And over here, Team Red House Corita, we have the trebuchet right down the bottom there. Then we have their Zeus, and then the Longbow and the Orion next to each other, kind of facing that building. Uh, I think only the trebuchet has jump capability for that lance as well. So we'll see how this works out, and you can let me know in the comments afterwards if you like the scenario and if you like kind of like a three-way battle with one lance each as opposed to like one star versus two lances and stuff we've done prior. So with that, we're going to go do the rolls, etc. And as per usual, all the movement is going to be done, so we'll be back showing you where everyone ended up, and then we'll do it step by step when shooting starts. Movement of the first turn complete. Flix Marauders had to move first followed by House Karita and then finally the Northman Highlanders, so that order will be transferring over to the shooting phase as well. The Zeus for Flix Marauders did a sprint, managed to get up to there, and the Marauder did a jump up onto the hill, looking in the direction of where the Northman Highlanders are coming from. The Stalker didn't move up that much, it's very slow, and also faced that direction. The Rifleman made him move up here to watch this pass to stop any flanking by the Northwind Highlanders and also to kind of create a difficulty that might need to be dealt with in the ensuing turns. The Northwind Highlanders, they stayed together as a tight formation more or less. Two of them jumping, the Wraith and the Blackjack onto the building there. Atlas to screen left just moved up his six uh, joint slowest mech on the table with the Longbow and the Warhammer to the right facing Flix Marauders. And then Team Red over here, the Trebuchet on top of the really high building there, the highest point of that building, did a jump. The rest of them just did ground moves into position. I think the longbow has indirect fire, so even if you can't see anyone from Perez, you'll still be able to do something. And the Orion and their Zeus just moving up, slow and steady. So three different kind of applied tactics there. With that, let's jump into the shooting and start rolling some dice. The shooting phase got started for Flex Murders with the Marauder firing at the Warhammer for the Northwind Highlanders. We're not going to go over the calculation for what you need to roll every single time at this point, but we will for the first couple of times just to remind everybody. But I uh, did also forget to mention, I mentioned that the this is loosely based on a scenario from the rule book. It is specifically a King of the Hill scenario, just in case you want to replicate it. Anywho, he has a base skill of four. He jumped for an extra two, shooting a medium range for an extra two shooting at target with a TNN of 1, so he needed 9 pluses, and the initial roll was pretty good. I've just realised you can't see some of the dice, because there's two more dice. He has four weapons. Two misses, two hits, just shy of a crit in one case, but that is two of the Warhammer's armour chipped away. I think it has five left, and again, if you're unfamiliar, or it's been a while, uh, all damage is applied at the end of the round, so even if something gets destroyed, they're still going to get a chance to fire. So remember that the Zeus, who is obscured, Around here, but you can see the token next to him sprinted, so he doesn't get to fire, but he is now the <clears throat> closest to the central objective that all the sides want. So the stalker fired next at medium range, it's firing a massive six weapons, and it shot them into the wraith since he's pretty close to the objective building. You can just about make him out there. But they jumped, so and their base TNN is three, which means that was an additional four. So it still worked out, even though he was starting at a base of three instead of four to be nines and his roll was not quite as good. He came close on a couple of them but no damage across all weapons so pretty disastrous there and it is also just worth mentioning that that's essentially it for Flix Marauders. The Zeus isn't firing because he sprinted and the rifleman to the top of the table right up there he cannot see anybody in any of his front arcs and I don't think he has any indirect fire does he? No he does not so he can't do anything. That was just to like ideally flank him around next round and also to stop any of the Northwind Highlanders doing it to them in round one. So now we're over to House Corridas firing aka Team Red and it was the trebuchet up on the building here that did jump so appalling chance to hit in general. He also shot at the Marauder who jumped itself so his he was needing uh, 10s or 11s I think but he actually rolled pretty well and we'll just pull back a little bit. Nope we're gonna have to pen down and turn. There is his dice, and it was pretty decent. He rolled two 11s, so just shy of a crit again. Uh, the double twos are a miss, though, so nothing there. But that is two damage of the Marauder's armor. Marauders, they have a fair chunk of armor. He's got five left, but if you get through that armor, they go down pretty quick because they only have three structure. So a potentially nasty outcome now. The Zeus brought medium weapons to bear against the Wraith, which at medium range is four weapons. And, again, with the Wraith jumping and having a base hit of three, it needed high numbers, but a double six will certainly do it. That's the only hit they got through, but it is a crit. That's the rest of the hits right there. 
all misses and we're going to roll for the crit live to see what it becomes only one die is available Ooh, that was almost insta destroyed i think a double six is insta death that's an 11 though which is a uh, engine hit yeah that was almost catastrophic that was almost an instant dead mech engine hit's still pretty bad but um, certainly better than the mech just disappearing off the table at the end of the round so one damage plus an engine hit what does the engine hit do again Ooh, plus one heat when firing weapons, so he's just going to generate flat heat. The Orion tried his best to join in against that Wraith, just again because it's the closest threat, and it's really the only thing you can see, I think, because the building is cutting off his view of the Atlas there, and vice versa. But, didn't roll anything, was looking for, uh, I think that was 11s again, wasn't it? 2, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah, I think it was 11s. Either way, definitely did not hit with anything. Final firing for Team Red was the longbow, which made use of its indirect fire three, I think it has, uh, using, it doesn't really matter, they're both identical as the spotters and they both moved the same and they both shot. But either way, uh, indirect fire into the wraith as well. Uh, uh, indirect fire applies a bunch of additional negatives to the end, so it was essentially needing crits more or less. Um, and certainly did not get it on the three shots it did fire. So those missiles swing wide of the wraith, sending the wraith in first has proved to be pretty beneficial because that thing is evasive. Over to the Northwind Highlanders shooting aka Team Green starting with the blackjack that jumped onto the building up there. Not a great chance to hit, it opted to fire three weapons medium range into the jumping marauder for Flix Marauders and don't really need to show you where it is. You can just about make out the dice there. All in all he was looking for 10s or 11s and didn't get any. Got two 9s, or sorry a 9 and an 8 rather, but not enough to actually land a hit. And the misses just keep on coming as the wraith that everybody apparently wanted dead uh, shot at the trebuchet up on the building, which I think you can just make out. Yep. Three weapons and whiffed with all of them. Then it was down to the two big guns on Team Green, starting with the Warhammer, who shot at the Stalker, since the Stalker only did a ground move. So he was only needing, well, base skill of four, shooting a medium range of six, then TNN on the Stalker's one. So needed sevens and managed to do three damage with its four medium range weapons it brought to bear so pretty good the stalker is chunky though has a ton of armor i think it has five left and finally for round one shooting the atlas who is not getting any of his line of sight blocked by this building with where he shot because he shot this way he shot at the orion who is not safe by this building either uh actually in general I might have added one but i don't think that matters base skill of three on the atlas pilot four five for range and it becomes a six on the target number for the Orion, that's a one, isn't it? Because it's so big. Yep, it's a one. So that would be a seven. So yeah, the hits that were hits. Oh, actually, that would mean that's a miss. So, my bad. Just two bits of damage to the Orion there. And uh, again, the Orion has tons of armor as well. So it's not really feeling it just yet. So that brings us to the end of round one. And there is no point scored by any of the three sides as none of them are in base-to-base -base contact with what we're calling the objective, the central control building. That will probably change next round, but we'll go around to that and do some initiative rolls and cover the order in which they're going. Top of round two here is the initiative order. It will be House Karita Team Red going last as they won the initial initiative roll off. Then Flix Marauders, which does mean the Northland Highlanders are going to be shooting and moving, or rather moving and shooting first. So we'll be back with all the movement done for all three sides, show you where everyone ends up and what movement speed they went at. Now the battlefield is gonna get real messy now because all the teams are mixing. So all movement done, and as we go into the shooting, it will be team green, blue, red. But let's show you just where they've all ended up. Uh, team green, the wraith has jumped onto the objective building, just opting to make use of that evasion. Again, it's base movement, or base target number being so high. The others kind of consolidate position. The Atlas moved up, the Warhammer moved up slightly, trying to guard its gear rear flank, just doing basic ground moves. The Blackjack jumped onto another building, and that's that. For Flix Marauders, the Rifleman had enough to come round that side of the building and end up where you can see him right there in the middle of your screen. Over here, the Marauder opted to stand still to try and get a good shot off on something. The Zeus and the Stalker, however, they got into contact with the objective building doing ground moves respectively. The Stalker is poking its like side round so it can fire around the side of the building. 
and the Zeus can obviously fire over the destroyed part it's on. Speaking of Zeus's, it's Zeus on Zeus of violence. This perfectly symmetrical fighting will get us everywhere because the other Zeus did a ground move there. The trebuchet did a jump down to here. Again, people going for flanks or trying anyway. The Orion opted to stand still right there and the longbow walked around. Now, it can't quite get a clear rear arc shot into the Atlas or the blackjack, but it can see the rear arc of the Warhammer, but the Warhammer is also partially obscured by the building. So it'll be a toss up who it goes after, I guess. But that's it for the movement. Let's start rolling some more dice. The violence started with the Wraith up here, having jumped up there, firing at the jumping trebuchet, so not a high chance to hit, but managed to go and get itself a crit there. He did generate himself one heat because of a damage sustained uh, after that, when the damage applied at the end of the first round. But either way, a crit is a crit, so it does get through. So we're going to see what it becomes. That's a six. We can silk the table. That is a weapon hit on the trebuchet. So it's lost one of its weapons at each range bracket, I believe that means. So that's pretty rough. And the crits keep on coming as the jumping blackjack fired into the Orion who stood still, which kind of offset the fact that he jumped and also is shooting at short range, which is up to six inches, which means there's no modifier addi additionally there. And he got both hits through, actually because he was needing 7s, I think it was, 6s or 7s, so either way, both definitely hit, and there was a crit, so... That is... Slightly off camera again, there is a 1 there, that is a 5, which means a no critical hit, so no additional effects to the Orion there, but 2 damage still. Sensing an opportunity, the Atlas brought its weapons to the Orion as well, just firing straight into it, I think it was, it was needing like... Four, five, five, I think it was. So that is another three damage and more armor ripped off of it. I think it has one armor point left, so it's going to be struggling a little bit. And the final bit of the shooting for the Northwind Highlanders in round two the Warhammer shot at the Marauder. It could see it, and the Marauder stood still, so that was a really good chance to hit. And I don't know if you can see the dice there, but only one hit got through, which was the 11, so not even quite a crit. So just one more bit of armor off of the Marauder. And that means we can move on to Flix Marauders. The Zeus on Zeus violence began. Short range, three weapons at short range, easy to hit, base skill of four, and then just plus one for the target number of the Zeus itself. So needing fives, that is three damage off of the armor of the enemy Zeus for House Garita. The Rifleman took advantage of being able to see the rear arc of the Wraith up on the objective and fired from its side. Four weapons at medium range, still needing tens I think it was, and only managed to get one hit through but it was into rear armour, so that's actually two damage. The Wraith is down to how much? two armour remaining and then three structure beyond that. The Marauder tried its luck, standing still, so minus one to the overall number needed into the Wraith on top of the objective up there, and only got one more bit of damage through, so he's still got one armour protecting that juicy structure. It was time for the Stalker to show what it could do. Last firing for Flix Marauders in this round. Six weapons fired at medium range into the Warhammer that just did a ground move. So pretty easy chance to hit starting from a base scale of three. It became a seven, I believe. And, or was it a six? Let's see, three, four, five, six. It was a six. And every bit of damage got through. There is all the dice there. Hopefully all visible. So that took off six. Well, sorry, it took off five armor that the Warhammer had left and took off one point of structure, which means that we're going to have to do a roll for getting into the structure, the crit for doing that. We're doing it live. Five, six, seven, eight. And eight is a weapon hit. Okay, take that. Pretty good. Not too bad. And now it is over to House Karita. Well, let's start with the perfectly symmetrical fighting. The Zeus fired into the Zeus, but didn't do quite the same. He took three damage. In this case, though, the House Krita Zeus only did two damage to the Marauders one, so not as bad. The Trebuchet, who's missing one weapon at every range bracket, just decided to go for a bit of a Hail Mary against the Wraith on the objective and completely missed with both its surviving medium range weapons. The Orion decided to shoot into the Blackjack since the Blackjack doesn't exactly have a lot of health and only managed to get two hits through. That's the first damage the Blackjack's taken, so it's lost two out of its five armor and then it's just got two structure left after that. Well, all that was left was for the longbow, starting at pilot skill 3, and shooting past a little bit of cover, which we added one on to for the difficulty, into the rear arc of the Northwind Highlander's Warhammer, 
and only missed with one set of weapons. So four damage plus one for hitting into the rear arc is exactly enough that at the end of the round, which is what we're going to cover in a second here, that Warhammer is exploding. So here we are at the end of round two, and there is points to score and mechs to explode, as just discussed. Unfortunately for the Northwind Highlanders, their lances down a mech, the Warhammer has exploded. So that's going to be rough for them. They did score points though. The Wraith is on the objective building, scores points equal to its size, which in this case is it's a size three. So that's three victory points. House Korea has scored four victory points for the Zeus touching the objective. And Flix Marauders has their Zeus touching the objective and the Stalker as well. So they're both size 4 and they have scored 8. So they are ahead. Forgot to cover the timeline for the map or for the game by the way. It's going to be 4 turns or if someone gets to 20 points or if there's a tabling. That's the 3 conditions that will trigger a complete tabling obviously. One team standing, two teams wiped out. Um, so that's the 3 conditions in which the match can end. So with that we'll get things cleaned up and be back at the top of turn 3. So as we begin the penultimate round, it will be the Northwind Highlanders having to move first, then shoot first, then it will be Flix Marauders, and then finally it will be House Karita, aka Team Red, moving last and firing last. Let's see where they all end up after the movement. Well, things are certainly going to get messy now, as every inch of the objective building is just crawling with mechs, attempting to score some points at the end of the round, and I don't even think I need to move the camera, I'm pretty sure every mech that's surviving is visible. Um, the Marauder, the Blackjack, the Wraith and the Trebuchet all did jumps, the rest all did ground moves to where you can see them. So there's going to be a lot of messy shooting in short range for sure and let the destruction begin. The Atlas fired at short range into the Orion, you can see the results there and with that damage it chipped through the armour left on the Orion into its juicy juicy structure below. So it is time for a crit roll. And that is a crit roll of a three, which is nothing, I think. Oh, it's an engine hit. So the engine of the Orion, wasn't that already damaged? Uh, no, I'm thinking of a different mech. But it has three structure left. If it loses one structure from any source, it will be into forced withdrawal, assuming it doesn't just blow up. Well, the Blackjack, who jumped onto the building here to score some points, tried to finish off the Orion, managed to only do one damage to it. That is enough that it will be into forced withdrawal, so that might matter in the final turn if it goes that far, because the Orion will not still be touching the objective, it will be running towards the table edge. And then finally for the Northwind Highlanders, since they lost their Warhammer, the Wraith overheated again because of that engine hit earlier in the game. It was him that got the engine hit, so he's up to two heat now. Uh, well, at least at the end of the round and fired point blank into the trebuchet, needing sevens, and if we just pan down a little bit there's the dice, he managed to chip off one armour of the trebuchet, who has two left. On to Flix Marauders, the Zeus tried to finish off the trebuchet, shooting into it, and only managed to hit it with one set of its short range weapons, so it certainly could have been better. The Stalker won't be firing, because it can't really see anybody, so on to the Marauder, it shot into the trebuchet to try and finish it off, it got Two damage through, which hits into structure, so we're going to have to roll for a crit, and leaves it on one, struct uh, one structure remaining, so the trebuchet is in forced withdrawal as well. Unless it's about to explode on a double six, of course. That's not a double six. That is a no critical hit at all. But at least it's in forced withdrawal. Uh, forced, I called it forced retreat, didn't I? It's forced withdrawal, either way. It's going off the table, so it's not going to be scoring any points, even if it lives in the final round. And finally for Flix Marauders, the Rifleman out of its corner arc there, shot into the longbow and did pretty well. Three out of the four hits landed, no crits or anything. That's also the first time the longbow's been hit and they have a ridiculous amount of armour. Not much structure, but still, he has six armour remaining, so I don't think he's going to be falling anytime soon. The Zeus for House Karida fired into Flix Marauders, Zeus, and landed every single hit. Need to pull back a little bit to see the dice there, but that's just three damage, so three armour lost. The retreating trebuchet tried to take out the wraith that's been just sitting there this whole time and managed to miss with every single weapon, although that's not really a surprise. In fact, he should have been rolling one less. Forgot that he lost the weapon, didn't he? Yes, he did, but it doesn't matter. He missed with every one. The Orion that is going into forced withdrawal fired at the Atlas point blank, short range, obviously. Also overheated, because why not? He's walking off the table anyway. All three hits landed. We just panned down to the dice here. Plus one for the overheat, so that's four armor chipped off of the Atlas. It's tanky, it's got six left, so not really feeling it. Oh, you might feel that though. This is the longbow firing short range, so just his base skill of three, and then one for the TNN of the Atlas, 
or TMN. I keep on getting the two mixed up. TMM. But either way, it's just needing fours. So all four damage got through. So now the Atlas is feeling it a little bit. It's got two armor left, which might matter for the final round. But I think that's everybody who can fire, that has fired and done anything. So we have to go to scoring and also applying damage, etc. So at the end of the penultimate round, we are actually going to have to play the fourth round we allotted, but only just barely. After tabulating the points for the size values of all the mechs touching or on the objective building, Flix Marauders are up to 19 of the 20 we set aside as being the target value. So they're one away from winning, which means the other two sides or what's left of them are going to have to put their differences aside to stop that victory. But the Northwind Highlanders, they are up to 11 points and the House Karita are up to 13 although uh, two of them are doing force withdrawal as we talked about so they can still fire but they have to move away because they're, they're running but with that let's jump into the top of the final round. So we've got to go quickly go over the initiative rolls before finishing the movement so we're going to do both in one here. Um, Northern Highlanders will be going last and they moved last then Police Marauders, so the first to move and indeed the first to shoot will be House Karita, two of which had to do force withdrawal, but they are still allowed to fire, so that's where they ended up with the Orion and the Trebuchet. The Zeus moves slightly, the Zeus on Zeus violence continues. The Longbow's a little hard to see, it's gone round the side to try and get a shot off round here, because then they're, they're kind of having to put their differences aside to try and wipe out Flex Marauders, it's not likely, but if they put their differences aside enough and roll well enough, it's not literally impossible, so that's the important part. Uh, speaking of which, the damage Wraith is over here with a jump, Blackjack there. Uh, the Marauder for Flix Marauders on the top of the building, just trying. As long as one of them lives, on that note, the Stalker put its rear facing against the biggest part of the building here and is just trying to survive. The Rifleman is blocking by moving in against it there. So, with that, let's go to House Creators shooting. Not off to a great start as the retreating Orion shot at the Marauder at the tippy top of the objective building and whiffed with every shot. The retreating trebuchet with missing weapons did better, with only two unfortunately that it's firing at medium range. Both hit though, it was looking for nines overall, I think four, five, six for range, seven for cover, nine, uh, that's seven, eight, nine for um, base TMM plus one for the jump. So yep, both hits landed, that leaves the Marauder on two armour and three structure beyond that. The Zeus on Zeus violence continues with House Karita Zeus shooting into the other Zeus point blank range obviously so just needing fives all of them hit and it got through to structure so we need a crit roll that was a, an aggressive roll it's a five which I think is nothing nothing can you imagine if that was a double six Ooh. I kind of forgot to cover during the movement but I did show it that the Atlas has kind of given up getting points purely to help try and stop <laughs> Flix Marauders from winning. Anyway, the longbow was the last one for his Karita. Fired into the rifleman, short range, full barrage of four weapons, all four hit. He was only looking for fours, and one of them was a crit. It leaves the rifleman on one armor, but this crit could do serious damage. Is that nothing again? That's a four. Uh, four is fire control hit. Well, we're at the end of the game, so that's not really going to matter. And over to Flix Marauder shooting, the Stalker is not shooting anything. Kind of a waste of the Stalker's firepower, but it could be winning the game for them. Anyway, the Rifleman is shooting at the longbow that just shot at it, and out of the four weapons it has at short range, three of them hit, and managed to get three more armour off. Uh, I don't even think it hit the structure, did it? Nope, he's still got three armour left. Longbows are pretty tanky. Say it with me, Zeus on Zeus violence again, short range firing, just needing fives. And the three damage got through. No crits, and I believe he had one armor surviving, so didn't even get to do a juice. I'm just curious if it was a crit. If it, one more structure had come off, it wouldn't have been anything. Fair enough, just just curious. And the last bit of shooting of the game for Flix Marauders was the Marauder at the top of the building, out of spite, shooting at the trebuchet just to try and kill it, needing 11s <laughs> all said and done, and uh, got nothing. So, nothing there. That's fair enough. Over to the Northwind Highlanders. I don't think they, none of them can even see the Stalker, so they're not going to win. But maybe out of spite, they can take out a mech. Oh, there is some potential here. The Marauder might fall. The Blackjack fired into two weapons at short range and both got through, which actually removed the last of its armor. Didn't touch structure, but that's now just its structure left. And it's only got three, and there's still that Wraith at the back of it. So let's see what he can do. Well, that engine hit really early in the game, really made the Wraith. Uh, the, yeah, I do mean Wraith. 
suffer there because it's up to heat level 2 so that's an additional 2 to the target needed and as a result that was base skill of 4 he jumped so that becomes a 6 and then TMM of 1 so that's 7, 8, 9 yeah so he missed he didn't do enough to kill it anyway but he would have got a hit through had he not been overheating uh, just out of curiosity had there, had there been a bit of structure what's rolling 4s for crits so that would have been nothing anyway so now the Atlas is just going to try and kill the Rifleman, and then I think that's game. So not only did the Atlas succeed in hitting with every single weapon, he is shooting a point blank range with a base skill of 3, so it just became needing 4s, so it's not hard. He did precisely enough that he chipped off the last of the Rifleman's armour, and indeed all of its structure. So he's dead. I mean, technically he got a crit through, but he's dead anyway. Would an 8 have been anything? An 8 would have been a weapon off, but prior to scoring, he's getting removed from the table. Speaking of which, let's go cover that, because the game is over. So at the end of the game, Rifleman explodes, that's fair enough, but because of the three mechs still on there, two of which are size four, so that's eight, nine, 10, 11, I think. Uh, are they all size four? Uh, no, yeah, the Marauder is size three. So they only needed one, so obviously that is more than enough to clear the 20 points assigned. If you're doing this for yourself and only playing with two sides, uh, that's probably a fine amount. If you were using three sides, they'll maybe up it a little bit, I think, just so that there's more of a brawl in the later stages when two sides kind of have to team up. I think if we'd done maybe one more turn, it would have been more interesting. Uh, just for the sake of completion, his Korea, they have the longbow and the Zeus touching, and they had 13, so that is another four and another eight. It's another 8 on top of 13. So they got 21, so they technically did hit the 20 required as well. But Flix Marauders have more than cleared it. And the Northwind Highlanders, the Atlas abandoned to try and actually keep the game going. Or to rather remove the current victor since they were ahead. Uh, they were on 11 and they are scoring 2 for the Blackjack, 3 for the Wraith. So that would take them to 16. So technically they've lost but they were just trying to stop the victor actually securing that point they needed at the end of the game. So that is going to do it for a return to Battletech Alpha Strike. It has been a little bit. Apologies if anything was done incorrectly. That's just unfortunately a side effect of not having the chance to play the game that often. And I hope the three-way battle was at least interesting, if not entirely balanced, just with a variation of the King of the Hill mission type scenario from the rule. I think I said from the quick rules at the top of the video, it's from the rule book for Alpha Strike. It gives you a few like general scenario types and then some specific examples of each. So this is just a variation of King of the Hill with one flag, more or less. Uh, or one hill, I should say. Surprisingly, only two mechs died the entire match, and only one of them right at the end. Uh, the Warhammer for the Northland Highlanders and the Rifleman that we just saw. Sure, the Orion and the Trebuchet were running off the table, but I think in terms of casualties for mechs, that was the least we've ever seen. Just as a, an interesting aside. But you can let me know what you thought of the, the style of battle from this variation of King of the Hill and whether or not you kind of like the three-way battles or if you would prefer you know, two larger forces just facing each other as normal, like two lances each. Um, but you can let me know. I, I don't know if three-way battles are particularly balanced. That's why we were trying it today. But either way, uh, the main thing stopping more Alpha Strike being on the channel is just not having enough mechs from different factions available and painted. I've got a bunch painted as my marauders but can't just have like two teams of them against each other that'd be way too confusing so working with what is available um hopefully eventually the mercenaries kickstarter will ship out to me because i did back that but i was a late backer so i'm basically bottom of the totem pole but that might give us some stuff uh to, like tanks and things to use maybe the aces rules with so that we have some ai enemies and can do some ai scenarios which might be something else to try out either way thank you very much for watching Please do let me know if you do want me to try and get more Alpha Strike on the channel as and when able. And just liking, commenting, subscribing all helps. If you are willing to go above and beyond to support the channel, consider becoming a channel member. You get some perks, including seeing video series early, like this one, Crisis Protocol, and others about a week early before everybody else. And there is still some of uh, exclusive videos, including one on how to paint my Marauder style, if you're interested. Either way. You can also check out the channel sponsor or press the thanks button. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Ta-ta for now.